Hi guys and welcome back to a new video. In today's video, I will be talking about another solo gold farm that you can do pretty easily and with which you can make a lot of gold. This is something I already mentioned in a previous video, but I just found a way to make it even more profitable and so this is why I wanted to share this update with all of you. For today's gold farm, all you want to do is use one character that you will really only use for this gold farm, so I would recommend you to use maybe an alt or any other characters that you're not really playing a lot with. All you want to do after that is go in Outland. When you're in Outland, you want to go in the Elfire Peninsula, and here you want to set your Earthstone to one of the cities that are around the throne of Kill Jaden. For instance, for old players, I would say Trollmar is probably the best, and then for Alliance players, Honor Hold is also going to be good. After that, all you want to do is go in the throne of Kill Jaden, and here you will have a chance at finding the world boss, Doom Lord Kazakh. So all you want to do is kill Doom Lord Kazakh. Then you want to go just here and you will find a couple of critters. You want to click on them and you want to use this toy right here, the Fractured Necrite Skull. As you can see, this is something that you will be able to use to then summon a portal that will teleport you in front of the Black Temple. And here when you arrive, you can directly go just here and you will have a chance at finding the world boss Doomwalker that you also want to kill. Then all you can do is go just here, and as you can see all around this area, you will have a chance at finding this rare, Colidus the Rap Watcher. Just kill him if he's spawn, and then after that you want to use your Earthstone and go back simply to the Elfire Peninsula. You want to go back just here and log off. Keep in mind again, these two world bosses will have between 3 to 4 hours of respawn time, so try to be amongst the first people in the day to kill them because like that first of all you will be able to know when they will respawn again and also like that you will be able to simply 3-4 hours later to log in on your character and do that again and each time it will normally take you maybe 2 or 3 minutes to do this little rotation so if you're doing it well and if you're lucky enough to be amongst the first people who are able to find the world boss then normally you should be able to kill them maybe 5-6 times a day and this is again something that will reward you with a lot of gold. So the reason why we want to kill these two world bosses and also the rare is very simple. As you can see, they drop a lot of really interesting items and all of them are BOE items. So it means that you will then be able to sell them on the auction house for a lot of gold. Also, what's interesting is the fact that many of them are unique appearances, which means that you will then be able to sell them for even more gold because people will have to use these different items to learn these different appearances. So definitely a really good way to make a lot of gold with all these different items. Next to that, as I mentioned, you also have this rare right here, Colidus, and it will drop all these different head pieces that, as you can see, are also unique items and that are always great to sell because, well, these are really good, especially, for instance, I would say the plate one and everything are going to be some of the best ones simply because you don't have a lot of these as an option for transmog for these different categories of armors. And also, keep in mind that when you kill the two world bosses, you will receive on average 550 raw gold. And you will also be able to get some of these primal fires and primal shadows that you can also sell on the auction house for some extra gold. So as you can see, since I started to do this method, I've been able to kill them many, many times. Uh, so for instance, in just two or three days, I was able to get, for instance, two of the Ethereum Nexus Rivers. 4 of the Hope Enders, 3 of the Talons of Tempest, 3 of the Exoder Life Staff, and then as you can see, many, many over of these different items. You will also get a few like necklaces and rings, as you can see, these ones you can directly vendor them, they're completely useless. And also probably some of these over BOEs might be a little bit useless, so you might want to vendor them. But what we're really after are all the different weapons that are probably the best items you can get from this farm. When it comes to the sell rate and the value, on average, most of them will sell for anywhere between 0.05 to 0.07 in terms of sell rate, which is really good. And then the value is also really good. As you can see, for instance, for the Ethereum Nexus River, it's 50k on average on European realms and 99,000 gold on average on US realms. Then for the staff, it's 63,000 gold on average on European realms and 77 on US realms. And finally, for the Opender, it's 36,000 gold on average on European realms and 83,000 gold on US realms. So as you can see, you will definitely be able to make a lot of gold. And keep in mind, sometimes, for instance, 
when killing Doomwalker, you will be able to get two of these different axes, or when killing Doomlord Kazakh, you will be able to get two of them or one of each. So you can sometimes really get a lot of really good items at once. So keep in mind, again, this is something that you can do really easily. The most challenging part of this gold farm is definitely to find these two world bosses. So try to really start in the morning because like that, you will be amongst the first people finding them. And after that, you can basically control the respawn timer because you will know when they will spawn again. And so you will then be able to log in when they spawn and kill them again and again. So this is really the best way to do this farm. Also, I'm personally doing it in warm mode on because there are just less people doing it in warm mode on. So definitely something you can do. And finally, again, this is something that will require this toy right here, the Fracture Necrolyte Skull. The only issue with this skull is the fact that you can only buy it during the Burning Crusade Time Walking event. So the next one, I believe, is going to be in August. And so unfortunately, you won't be able to do it before that. As you can see, it will be on the 16th of August. If you don't have that, then of course, it's going to be a little bit more tricky to do this farm. As you can see, what you can, of course, always do is simply like just travel from one place to another. But again, it's just going to take a little bit more time and it might not be as efficient as when you have this toy. So it's really up to you to see if you still want to try or not. What you can, of course, do as well is simply have two different characters located on both areas. And like that, you can just log in on both of them. So that's something that can make it even easier. But overall, this is really what I would recommend you to do. I will be back very soon with more guides and more videos. And in the meantime, I wish you all a great start of the weekend. Bye.